President Lacker, Vice President um, Merchant, and Superintendent Korostoff, I'll be speaking about the controller's fiscal stress monitoring system and also the most recent Moody's bond rating for New Rochelle. There's an evaluation of financial condition of school districts by the controller, the New York State controller, and they're evaluating districts' ability to withstand financial strain based on 2010-2011 through 2012-2013 data. Financial strain is the inability to endure short-term financial pressures, such as revenue shortfalls or unanticipated expenditures. This is a new program from the controller's office. The district responded to preliminary information from the controller's office in November. We have not received a final report. However, it was published on the controller's website in January. There are four designations, considered not in financial stress, nearing financial stress, moderate financial stress, and in significant financial stress. The New Rochelle City School District was classified in the moderate financial stress category. Let's look at this why this is, what is the impact, what are the alternatives, and what does the future hold? The major factor of the school district's classification of moderate fiscal stress is declining fund balance. Simply put, fund balance is the accumulated excess of revenues over expenses over time. The increases in New Rochelle's fund balance and subsequent decreases were a conscious plan to manage the district in a stable fashion during the worst financial crisis since the Great Depression. Let's look at the history. First, we'll look at, as a base, 2008 to 2010, and then we'll look at the three years under the controller's review. So we see in 2008-9, $15.7 million of fund balance. 2009-10, 21.3 million dollars of fund balance. In the 2009-10 year, the district borrowed five million dollars for tax certiorari reserves. This is a liability, but it is also an asset. So that is part of the reason why we have an increase between these two years. During this year, we had expenses for tax certiorari expenses where people have come in and they've been successful in lowering the assessment on their property. So that, these are increased expenses. In 2008-2009, we had $4 million of expenses. And in 2009-10, we had $5 million of expenses. I'd like to point out, while it isn't on the screen, in 2007-2008, there were $2.5 million of tax certiorari expenses. On SCARS, these are current year reduction of tax revenue, property tax revenue. In 2008-2009, we had $1.8 million of reduction in revenue. And in 2009-2010, 
a $2.7 million reduction in revenue. And also, while it isn't on the screen, in 2007, 2008, it was a $700,000 reduction in revenue. Now, let's look at the three years which are covered under the controller's review. We had 2010-2011, the first year, a fund balance of $17.9 million, and at the end of the year, at, at the end of the review, the end of the 12-13 year, a $13,176,000 fund balance. So this is the issue that the controller is referring to. Now, on our expenses for tax certiaries and reduction in revenues for SCARs, during this time period we had three and a quarter million dollars, five and a quarter million dollars, but I need to point out that uh, some of these funds were actually expenses attributable to the prior year, so we'd really look at a combination, an average is four and a quarter million dollars, and then going to three and a half million dollars. So our expenses, we can see the trend coming up, coming down, and on SCARS, we had 2.3 million, 1 million, about $900,000. So our reductions in revenues are also coming down. This is good foreboding for the future, as we will talk about. Here is the issue, and the concern is the ability to deal with unexpected reductions in revenue or unexpected increases in expend expenditures. <coughs> Some observation on the impact of a declining fund balance, which we have had here. The district has been able to manage unexpected expenses and revenue shortfalls when they have occurred. We have insurance, which covers catastrophic occurrences. Several years ago, Governor Patterson proposed mid-year state aid cuts. Without, we were able, the district was able, within these parameters, to manage those, that situation, without disrupting the district. I would point out that the district is more susceptible to revenue cuts than to unexpected expenditure, unexpected expenditures. Also, New Rochelle is larger than most districts, so a smaller percentage fund balance to budget can still equal to a larger dollar amount than most school districts. What are the alternatives to a declining fund balance? To increase fund balance requires increasing revenues, mainly through taxes or decreasing expenses. This is a, ba this is a balancing process. For perspective, I'd like to point out that we have already reduced about 200 positions in the last five years on the expenditure side. And on the overall budget side, in the last five years, the budget has increased by 4.37%, less than 1% a year. While the tax rate increase, the revenue, has gone up by 14%. 0.48%. So it is a balancing issue on managing this. The future. Uh. 
We're projecting fund balance to level off at $10.3 million in 2013-14 and in future years. Tax certiorari expenses and SCAR revenue reductions are reverting to pre-financial crisis levels, which should have a positive impact on fund balance going forward. Pension costs are topping out and should decline in future years. State aid should increase as the economy improves and state tax revenues increase. Further, we have a light debt service. In 2006-2007, debt service was 6% of the budget. And in the current year, 2013-14, it's 4% of the budget. The situation requires constant monitoring and management, which we will continue to do. So in conclusion, New Rochelle runs lean. This has enabled the district to t keep tax rates down while meeting all its obligations. And importantly, the priority of the district has been to use its revenue to provide instructional services. And finally, we're grateful to the controller for implementing the financial monitoring system and raising this issue. Are there any questions on this? Yeah, on the, uh, first of the fund balance that you show, is that all of the different funds, or is that just the general fund balance? So it does include, uh, and the general fund balance uh, by uh, the good state law, we can't have more than 4%, correct? 4% of the estimated fund balance. Ours is uh, about 1.5%. So how much of this fund balance is undesignated? And actually, actually, I would like to see how that's spread out over the years. How many designated change from year to year instead of the overall fund balance? If I can do that, and I can give that to the board, I'd be happy. Okay, so if you can provide that, that would be great. I mean, I know um, it's a nice presentation and all, but we're still, you know, some of the criteria, some of what you said that we experienced, every other district experienced as well. And we are in the bottom 5% of all districts in New York State. You know, if we did that, you know, one through four scale that we do for state tests, we're familiar with our kids, we got it essentially at number two. Um, and two and one were on the 5% of all of uh, New York State. So you know, I think this is a significant issue and a problem. I'd like to see you know, when the budget comes out, how we're going to rectify this going forward, and not just for next year, but over the next year, three to five years. I think what we're looking at is the fund balance leveling out at about $10.3 million. And then with the expenses for tax associate converted to the crisis levels, and the reductions in revenues, uh, reverted to pre-crisis revenues, revenues, that will have a positive impact on fund balance going forward, as well as the, uh, the retirement systems top of the But again, all districts face that. All districts That's face right. an increase in tax rate. All districts face an increase in, in pension funds and medical funds. So, but we are the ones that, out of all of Westchester, we're the only ones that got this low rating. So. The question is, what, what did we do not, not as well as some of the other districts did? That's well, I, I would make the observation that we, that two years ago, we had a string of people come to our meetings who were highly critical of the amount of fund balance that we had. We were accused of having too much fund balance. We were accused of having fund balance in excess of what the law allows. Uh, and we had a lot of explaining to on why our fund balance was high as it was, it's ironic now that two years later, uh, we are find ourselves, uh, again, at least according to the controller, uh, in some uh, uh, potential stress uh, because we have drawn the fund balance down and brought it down to the 1.4% uh, as opposed to the 4% that is authorized. So I suspect that other districts who keep fund balance closer to 4%, and there must be many, 
key fund balance closer to 4%. If they're able to do that, uh, they wouldn't be in this situation. And we may have, uh, because of the composition of our uh, real property in New Rochelle, um, I, I can't say for every single district, but certainly for a lot of districts, the uh, uh, commercial certiorari's, the uh, losses that we have had, I think the decline in the tax assessment base in New Rochelle, which we talk about every year at budget season, one of my favorite, which I you know, started in statistics, uh, that I quote about how New Rochelle has lost more than a third, more than a third of its total assessment base. Uh, I'm not sure that's true of every other community. So I think we may have some uh, unique circumstances um, that would explain it. It doesn't mean that well, we should be concerned about it. And I think uh, to the extent that you're going to plan to stabilize and bring it up uh, a little bit if you can, um, that should so what you're having so politics. So what he said then essentially is that we overtax people uh, beforehand. We were over the rate that we're supposed to be. No, we never were over the rate that we were supposed to be. Over the four percent? We were we never, never over the four percent. Yeah. No, no. There are people who came here and said that, but we never were. We had our auditors year well, the after number year after said, year. The number you showed earlier, for 2008 to 2009, was over four percent. You take a look at it. It was 21 million dollars out of a out of a 230 million dollar budget. So that's close to 10. Right, so then that's what the presentation should have been on undesignated, not on the whole fund. So it should, the presentation should have been on undesignated, not on the entire fund. So, so what essentially you're saying is saying that we overtaxed folks and then now we're draining it down. And so we took a hit because we had a higher rate and now we're at a much lower rate. But the other districts were able to maintain the, the rate that they were supposed to do within the 4% uh, based by the funding year thing. So we were at high, we're down low, everyone else stayed, uh, stayed in management of the fund. I think you draw, I don't know, I, just to say we overtaxed. Uh, Look, that's what you said, we had a high one and then we went down low. It doesn't mean we overtaxed, it means we taxed prudently uh, and it means that we had the balances that we had to do. I would not make an assumption and make a public statement that we overtaxed for years uh, in the community when, uh, at, when our budgets were passed, when our auditors went through our reports. Uh, I mean, we can certainly dig into this further, and, and uh, I'm sure Mr. Quinn will provide additional information on undesignated, but I, I just, I don't think that we should be coming in and making conclusory remarks that we overtaxed, uh, that our fund balance was in excess of the law. Uh, I, uh, well, you can say whatever you want to say. Mr. Quinn, has, um, has the controller's office or anyone given a breakdown of how they came up with the fiscal score of 50%? Yes, yes they did. We did get that information um, in the way that we did respond to it. It was preliminary, it was subject to change, and then uh, we didn't hear anything that was not the last time. But I'd be interested to see how that breakdown yeah. came through because it that's maybe the the predominant factor was the time of fund balance. Because right. that's 50% of the score. So. Exactly. And that's why our 50% was, as we can see here. The issue of the increased fund balance, and this was discussed over probably the last five or six budget years, where, once again, Paul Farrow's dream. The year before the last budget year, the year before the last budget year, and that's why I always listen to that sticks in people's mind. We saw that the years were coming, and so we built up fund balance during the years when we had opportunities, and we threw it down during the lean years. It wasn't an overtaxing. There were some factors which contributed to it. Part of it was reduction of expenditures. Part of it was not utilizing all the um, error funds, federal error funds, in the years that it was given. And part of it, uh, those were the major factors. The, when, 
when someone says about increasing fund balance, there are two ways to do it, essentially. You increase your taxes, or you decrease your expenditures. Those are the two components. And so if we're looking forward to very quickly increase fund balance, it's increasing taxes or decreasing expenditures. And as I try to get this in perspective, in the last five years, we've reduced about 200 positions. That's an expenditure reduction, very large. In the last five years, the budget has increased by 4.3%. Our tax rate has increased by 4.48%. So that's the good perspective of the discussion. But ultimately, when you say, what can we do differently? We can increase taxes or decrease expenses. That's nice. 